Southwest 3260 only tired, runway 24 right to line. Today we're going to demonstrate a situation where you're flying along on an IFR flight plan and you want to change altitudes. Be it for a better ride, fuel efficiency, or clouds, one of the most common times that air traffic controllers get a request for an altitude change from a pilot is during a check on with a new frequency. But have you ever noticed a lengthy pause or a seemingly unnecessary standby followed by silence from the controller after this request? Let's take a look. November 210 Pop Echo has just been handed off from this sector over to this sector. Listen in as we check on with the new controller and make our altitude change request. Denver Center, good afternoon. Baron 210 Pop Echo, 8000, request climb to 12000. Baron 210 Pop Echo, Denver Center, struggling with temperature 29 or 7 to standby. Let's pause this for a moment and look at the situation on the radar. We were just given a frequency change from this sector, we'll call it sector 1. Over to this sector, we'll call it sector 2. Air traffic controllers are to switch aircraft to the next controller or sector once all conflicts have been resolved and before the aircraft reaches the boundary of the new sector. This is why we received the frequency change to contact sector 2 about 15 miles outside of their boundary. The controller who told us to stand by owns all of sector 2 from the surface upwards. However, sector 1, where we're coming from, only owns their lateral limits from the surface up to 9,000. Above Sector 1 sits a sector that we'll call Sector 3. Sector 3 owns 10,000 and above within their lateral limits. We have to remember the airspace is all three-dimensional. Let's take a look at this in 3D to help better understand the situation. When Sector 1 handed us off to Sector 2, Sector 3 never even knew about us. They didn't need to because we were never going to hit their airspace. Remember, they own 10,000 and above. We were at 8,000. However, now that we want to climb to 12,000, that would put us inside of Sector 3's airspace. Furthermore, Sector 2 needs to get permission from Sector 1 in order to do anything with us before we actually enter Sector 2's airspace. Let's hop back in the cockpit and watch this play out from the pilot's perspective. Denver Center, good afternoon. Baron 210 Pop Echo, 8000, request climb to 12000. Baron 210 Pop Echo, Denver Center, struggling with temperature 29 or 7 to standby. Baron Zero Pop Echo, climb and maintain 1-2000. Climb and maintain 1-2000, Baron Zero Pop Echo. So what was the reason for this lengthy pause? The controller seemingly told us to stand by, did nothing, and then several seconds later, he granted us our request. We didn't hear any control instructions to move another aircraft out of the way, nor did the controller have any aircraft to talk to during this time. Let's take a look at what was going on on ATC's side of things. Denver Center, good afternoon. Baron 210 Pop Echo, 8000, request climb to 1-2000. Baron 210 Pop Echo, Denver Center, struggling on altimeter 29 or 7 to standby. Sector 1. Sector 2, APRAC uh, control, November 210 Pop Echo. November 210 Pop Echo is your control, RS. MC. Sector 3. Sector 2, point out uh, 5 miles north of Sterling Airport, November 210 Papa Echo, climbing to 12000 southwest bound. November 210 Papa Echo, point out approved, AV. Yeah, MC. Baron Zero Papa Echo, climb and maintain 12000. Climb and maintain 12000. Baron Zero Papa Echo. So I know that that all happened really fast. Let's break it down. The first call that Sector 2 just made was to Sector 1. Sector 1 released control of our aircraft to Sector 2. The second call that you heard was Sector 2 calling Sector 3 to get permission to use their airspace as they climbed us up to 12,000 feet. So let's take another look at it, this time with subtitles and from the sideways view so you can see the airspace in three dimensions. Denver Center, good afternoon. Baron 210 Pop Echo, 8000, request climb to 12000. Baron 210 Pop Echo, Denver Center, struggling altimeter 29 or 7 to standby. Sector 1. Sector 2, APRAC uh, control, November 210 Pop Echo. November 210 Papa Echo is your control, RS. MC. Sector 3. Sector 2, point out uh, 5 miles north of Sterling Airport, November 210 Papa Echo, climbing to 12000 southwestbound. November 210 Papa Echo, point out approved, AV. Yeah, MC. Baron 0 Papa Echo, climb and maintain 12000. Climb and maintain 12000, Baron 0 Papa Echo. So there you have it. 23 seconds of radio silence, which might seem like an eternity from your perspective in the cockpit. However, ATC is working hard behind the scenes to ensure the safety of you and everybody else in the sky, and in order to accommodate your requests. We hope this demonstration showed you what happens on the controller side of the radio. 
All of this coordination was done in real time and displays the fast-paced environment that air traffic controllers work in every single day. Did you know that you can use Pilot Edge to learn how to talk on the radios, help you learn to fly, become a better pilot, and maintain proficiency? All from an at-home flight simulator. Pilot Edge's live air traffic controllers will talk to you, just like you heard in this video, as you fly on your flight simulator. Stop flying alone and start flying in the system on your home flight simulator. Get started with Pilot Edge today by visiting pilotedge.net.